Americans. This is your favorite alien on Friday, November 8th. TGIF. And uh, today, me and Bubba here, it's getting a little cold in Georgia, you know. It's about 45 degrees, but uh, hey, uh, it'll be colder later on in the week, so I may not do any videos for a while. But, uh, just wanted to do this video and answer a Mrs. Patricia W. Didn't say what state she's from. But here's a letter anyway that she sent me or email. Dear Mr. Alien. Boy, she's a nice lady too, huh? I saw your video on President Trump and Ukraine and Nixon and China. And I wanted to tell you a little story. I was born in 1969. My dad was a U.S. diplomat for 50 years. And he told me stories when I was a teenager about what happened during Mr. Nixon's first administration and how it cost him his second administration uh, of uh, the illegal stuff that he did with Mr. Kissinger. Because not even the Congress knew about it. They were so uh, high hum that uh, by the time he finished, they had to go along with it and whip rush it down the rug. Uh, can you elaborate a little more? Because my dad gave me some stories, but I don't know how much of that is true or fact. So, okay, Miss. Patricia W., uh, I'll try to. I'll tell you when it's facts and when it's conjecture, okay? And by the way, President Trump is accused of uh, prit pro quo here for Ukraine for domestic purposes. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the Democrats here don't know that you have to go through the Supreme Court and the federal courts to determine if that's constitutional or not because... The other two presidents that did this, and it wasn't for domestic service, it was for uh, political considerations, yes, was President Eisenhower and Richard Nixon. And I'll go with them in order, okay? And I'll tell you what's fact and what's for the conjecture. Okay, the fact was President Eisenhower in the second term in 1956 intervened in the U uh, first Israeli-Arab War of 1956, which really wasn't Israeli-Arab War. It was more of a Israeli, French, and British war. Now, mind you, in 1956, Queen Elizabeth was finishing up her first four years of being queen. Churchill had just been deposed a year earlier in 55, And I think it was Macmillan that was in there as prime minister. Anyway... Uh, in 1952, Egyptians overthrew their king, Farouk, and Gabdel, Abdel, uh, Gamar Abdel Nasser became the de facto ruler of Egypt. And he subsequently nationalized the Suez Canal. And there was a scare when he did that in 52 because the United States at the time, remember, owned the Panama Canal or had a perpetual treaty with Panama on the Panama Canal. And some of the scare that I can tell you from my home country was that they, in the late 50s, thought that the United States, that Panama was going to try to nationalize it just like the Egyptians did. Well, that was the main concern. The French and the British, of course, were angry because they had assets there. Big money that they're losing in the Suez Canal. And the Israelis, they didn't like the fact that Kabbalah and Nasser, being a pro-Arab and definitely wanted to destroy Israel, had control of Egypt. So, in 1956, they invaded Egypt, all three of them. And the thing was that Israeli was promised that they would control the Sinai Peninsula. Well, President Eisenhower put a nick in that, and I know he did a lot of arm twisting on the French and the British and the Israelis, and they had to withdraw big time. 
So when they withdrew, that was a loss. And remember, at the time, the French were having heavy losses in French Indochina. They were losing their colonial system, and they had a war, the Vietnam War. Yes, they were fighting the Vietnam War before you Americans got into it. Anyway, uh, the British were losing their colonials uh, big time in, the, in that time of the 1950s. I mean, every colonial assets that they had in Africa was falling one by one. Bing, 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 bing. So their British Empire was disintegrating. Uh, and the Americans, well, they were, had a fight with the Soviet Union. The vice president was Richard Nixon. And at the time, he decided, hey, uh, we had just finished a, a disastrous war with China and the Korea. The French are fighting French Indochina. And they had just finished that war in 54, losing it, and North Vietnam became a state. And South Vietnam became a state. Just like North and South Korea. So China, even though they were having a little disagreement with the Soviet Union, had two pals in their borders. And that's the thing that's irked China for their non, okay? Let's flip over to 1969. From 1945 to 1969, or 71, Nationalist China, i.e. Taiwan, controlled the seat in the UN. Why did they offer a seat to the UN to China? You ask me. I would tell you that somebody was stupid. Anyway, in 1969, President uh, Nixon had enough with the Vietnam War that he inherited from the French and uh, President Johnson and Nick, uh, Kennedy... Uh, so he was trying to get away with it. He needed a buffer in order to force this war out of it. So he used China as a buffer. And he went an illegal thing with China. Uh, communications between him, Henry Kissinger, and the Chinese government. And did a lot of arm twisting in the UN. And in 1971, China... Communist China took over the seat, and Nationalist China, i.e. Taiwan, doesn't even get represented in the United Nations. They're considered a renegade province of China. How can you go that route? I don't understand that, but that's what he did. That's caused a lot of ramifications ever since. Now, President Nixon thought that he was going to get caught with the hands in the cookie jar when he did that, especially when he went to China in 1972. Now, the media at the time and the Congress swept us under the rug. They knew there was hanky-panky going on here, but they swept it under the rug. You look at the classified information that you have at the time, and two people that, or three people that could probably confirm some of this, Henry Kissinger, number one, and Bernstein, and Woodward, number two, because I'm pretty sure that Deep Throat Gave him a lot of information about this. This is why Nixon was so scary in 1972. He didn't understand that he didn't have to do a thing. He was going to win that, that election with a landslide. But no, he was scared about the Democrats. Because he figured that they had found his hanky-panky. That's why he ordered the break-in into the Watergate National uh, Committee's, Democratic National Committee's office at Watergate. So... This is a partial explanation, Miss Pat W. If you need more, just email me back. But you Americans, look at this. Check with the records. Go through in, uh, open records policy, because that should be disqualified or, you know, open to your records now. Richard Nixon's long dead. The only person that can help you, like I said, is Henry Kissinger. He was the primary guy involved in this, and Bernstein and Woodward, because Deep Throat had pretty good knowledge of this. And this is why Watergate happened. Nixon's scary that he thought he was going to get caught in the hands in the cookie jar. Anyway, this is your favorite alien. Good day.